Today, we're gonna to be diving into three T's that can help fight cancer. You might've heard the saying, let food be thy medicine. But how exactly can we do that? Dr. Lee is the president of the Angiogenesis Foundation and the author of Eat to Beat Disease and Eat to Beat Your Diet, both New York Times bestsellers. His research focuses on angiogenesis, the process by which our bodies grow new blood vessels. Tumors rely on angiogenesis to bring in nutrients and oxygen. If we can prevent a tumor from building its blood supply, we can keep it small and manageable. My book, Eat to Beat the Seas, I got it right here. Check it out if you haven't read it. I strongly recommend it, Eat to Beat the Seas. It's got a lot of stuff in here about food doses and all the different kinds of foods that can activate your health defenses to fight cancer. There's whole sections about um, cancer-fighting foods in there. We're gonna explore three foods each, starting with tea that Dr. Lee highlights for their cancer-fighting properties. These foods are more than just tasty. They're loaded with bioactive compounds that support your body's natural defenses. Let's jump in. Number one, tree nuts, walnuts. Technically, walnuts begin with W, but Dr. Lee refers to them as tree nuts. And that's our first T. Walnuts are nutrient powerhouses. They're rich in elegitanin, special plant compounds. Your gut bacteria transform into something called urolithins. These molecules help block the formation of new blood vessels that tumors need to grow. The first food that I want to talk about that can lower your risk of cancer are walnuts. That's right, walnuts, tree nut. Now, I personally love walnuts that come in halves, right? Um, if you're already out of the shell and each of the half looks like a wing. That's how you always think about walnuts. I'm going to tell you what's in a walnut, why it's useful for cancer fighting. And then if you like to eat walnuts, I'm going to tell you how I actually uh, use them for my own food. Walnuts can actually help amp up your body's health defenses so that you can actually protect yourself against cancer, right? So it lowers a risk. Walnut fits the bill as a cancer defense system. Now, what's in a walnut? So walnuts are a source of plant-based omega-3 fatty acids. These are healthy fats. And guess what healthy fats do? Well, one thing they do is they improve the power of your immune cells. These cells are called T cells, all right? They're just part of our immune system. We need those T cells to wipe out cancer. And eating walnuts gives our T cells a real boost, all right? Kind of arms them up big time. Now, walnuts also contain a natural bioactive, a polyphenol, called elagitanins, all right? It's not just one molecule, it's a group of molecules. Elagitanins, all right? And these compounds, when we eat a walnut, these uh, compounds get into our bloodstream and they can help cut off the blood supply. But these elagitanins also partly tumble down our gut right into our colon where our gut bacteria actually is and where our healthy gut bacteria lives, all right? The gut bacteria convert the elagitanins in walnuts into something called urolithin, U-R-O-L-I-T-H-I-N-S, urolithins, all right? And guess what? Those urolithins get back into our bloodstream. They've got strong anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects. Protects your DNA by antioxidant and protects, prevents cancer from flaring up by lowering inflammation. All right. And that's just from the omega-3 and the elagitanins. Beyond their anti-angiogenic superpowers, walnuts are loaded with healthy fats, particularly omega-3 fatty acids that support heart and brain health. They provide fiber to nourish your gut microbiome plus magnesium, vitamin E, and B vitamins. This combination helps reduce inflammation and supports your immune system. Studies show that people who eat nuts regularly tend to have lower rates of heart disease and better weight management. So there's no need to fear their calorie content. One more thing about walnuts, guess what? Walnuts actually have a substance that can kill cancer stem cells. Those are those pesky cells I told you about that have helped the cancer come back the baby cancer cells, well, wal eating walnuts actually has a substance that kills the cancer stem cells so the cancer won't come back. This has been studied um, in a lab as well as in people with colorectal cancer, all right? Now, I'm telling you, there was like a study of 700 uh, people with uh, colon cancer, stage three colon cancer. They were getting the regular treatments and it showed that those people who actually were eating regularly, a fistful of walnuts, tree nuts like walnuts a couple of times a week, they have like a 50% lower risk of dying from their colon cancer. So this isn't, you know, walnuts being 
the chemo, it's actually adding walnuts to boost the health defenses while you're getting regular treatment. Dr. Lee is a big fan of walnuts and has some tasty ideas for enjoying them. Try dry toasting them in a skillet for just a minute or two, you'll immediately notice the warm, nutty aroma. Toss them over a bowl of oatmeal or Greek yogurt with fresh fruit for a satisfying crunch. You can also whip up a walnut pesto by blending walnuts with basil, garlic, olive oil, and parmesan, a richer, earthier twist on the classic pine nut version with bonus health perks. Now, how do I like to eat walnuts? There's a lot of different ways, and I thought I would share some of them with you. So first of all, for any kind of tree nut, but also walnuts, um, I, like to, I like to roast them lightly in order to bring out their flavor. Heat the pan, you don't want to, you're not cooking the walnuts, you're getting the, the pan hot, and you're moving, you're going to be holding the handle of the pot, move it back and forth and back and forth. All right, and now the walnuts are shaking around, you're gonna to toast up the walnuts that way. You could start smelling their flavor after, you know, a few couple of minutes um, and stop before they burn. So as soon as you kind of get that nice fragrant um, and they're kind of uh, crisped up, all right, I literally just like turn off the flame, take them off the flame, pour them off onto a plate, let them cool down, all right? And once you're cool, you can crush them up and now you've got these crushed up Toasted walnuts, I love that. Sprinkle it over your yogurt or sprinkle some in your oatmeal. If you can't have nuts, don't worry. Raspberries and pomegranates contain similar beneficial compounds. But if walnuts are on your menu, they're a convenient, portable snack that delivers long-lasting flavor and a healthy dose of anti-angiogenic goodness. Our second tea is tomatoes. These juicy fruits, yes, they're technically fruits. Some of you might think that tomato is a vegetable, right? But it's actually a fruit. And tomatoes are pretty wonderful because not only do they taste good, but they've actually been shown to lower the risk of prostate cancer and breast cancer. So how does it do this? Well, tomatoes contain bioactives and the secret to health in foods is often the bioactive. One of the bioactives in tomato is uh, vitamin C. Vitamin C is a powerful anti-inflammatory substance. Another bioactive in tomato is called lycopene, which is a carotenoid. Now, lycopene does a lot of different things that are beneficial for the body. One of them is that lycopene protects our DNA against damage from uh, oxidative stress, including ultraviolet radiation like sun damage. That's right, eating tomatoes with the lycopene can protect us against uh, damage from the sun. That means kind of like sunscreen, but from the inside out. So. Sun exposure can damage your DNA. Lycopene protects your DNA against the sun damage. And you can actually eat tomatoes in order to be able to protect yourself and protect you from the inside out from sun damage coming from the outside. Tomatoes are packed with essential nutrients, including vitamins C, K, and potassium. But what truly sets them apart are their bioactive compounds, such as lycopene, beta carotene, and flavonoids. These compounds are scientifically proven to have antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and anti-cancer properties. In fact, a large study of more than 30,000 men found that those who ate just two to three half cup servings of cooked tomatoes each week had about a 29% lower risk of developing prostate cancer. Let's jump back to the human studies. This is actually the health professionals follow-up study of 46,000 men, and it found that those men who ate two to three servings of cooked tomatoes per week had a 30% reduction in the risk of developing prostate cancer, which depends upon angiogenesis. And in fact, those men who did develop prostate cancer, when they looked deeply in the, tu in the tumor, this is molecular pathology, they actually found that the men who ate more uh, cooked tomato sauce actually had less, fewer blood vessels, and also they also found that the tumors were less aggressive as well. Let's know how Dr. William Lee like to eat tomatoes and their types, which is best for us? Dr. Lee points out that lightly sauteing tomatoes for just a couple of minutes can boost lycopene absorption by 50%, and cooking them with olive oil can actually double it. Combine the two, and you could end up tripling the amount your body absorbs. Now, how do I like to eat tomatoes? I like to eat tomatoes raw, sliced into a salad. Um, absolutely great way to get great flavor, great hydration, and the vitamin C is really good. But if you want to get the most out of lycopene, okay, that is that antioxidant. That's the one that helps to protect your DNA. You want to actually make sure you get as much lycopene as possible. How do you get the most lycopene out of a tomato? Well, you want to actually heat it, like cook it, saute it uh, in a pan, 
And so you're actually cooking tomatoes like a tomato sauce, all right, like a sugo, and add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. So here's what happens. The heat from cooking converts the chemical structure of lycopene, okay, which is natural, into a slightly different chemical structure, also natural, that your body loves to absorb. So you eat, when you cook tomatoes, you actually get more lycopene that's easier for your body to absorb. Add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. You know why? Because lycopene is what's known as fat soluble, which means that lycopene likes to dissolve in oil. So when you actually cook tomato sauce, the lycopene converts into the part your body likes it, and you mix it with the olive oil, and now it really gets absorbed uh, into your body very, very easily. And that's why, by the way, the Mediterranean diet is so healthy, and it's got so many tomato recipes in it. Usually the tomato is cooked, all right? Now, there are many varietals of tomatoes out there. If you go to your grocery store in the summertime or you go to the farmer's market, it's almost overwhelming how many different types of tomatoes there are. You'll see so many options. So I always ask, which one should I buy, right? So if you're sort of looking from the culinary side, I'll leave it up to you to figure out which one tastes the best. But I'll tell you when it comes to health, the best tomatoes are called San Marzano tomatoes, which is a kind of plum tomato originally from the town of San Marzano, which is on the slope of a volcano called Vesuvius near Naples, Italy. And you can often find San Marzano tomatoes grown outside of Italy. And you'll find these in the farmer's market or even the grocery store. But if you can't find fresh San Marzano, you can easily find canned San Marzano tomatoes in the middle aisle of the grocery store. And it turns out that canned San Marzano tomatoes, whole or pureed tomatoes, still have the good stuff, the lycopene. And San Marzano tomatoes just have higher amounts. It's one of the most potent when it comes to lycopene. Another potent uh, tomato that you can actually definitely find in your grocery store are these little tiny cherry tomatoes. They are like lycopene bombs. They're really packed with the lycopene, all right? And so they're small, but they're really, really powerful. You actually want to cook with cherry tomatoes. What I like to do, I like to sear them. So you heat some olive oil, a little bit of garlic, all right, and when the oil is hot and flavored with the garlic, just throw some uh, cherry tomatoes in there and you'll see them blister and pop and they'll start to cook down. It makes for a really wonderful uh, tomato sauce. To maximize lycopene, choose varieties like San Marzano, cherry, red black skin, or tangerine tomatoes. Cook them with extra virgin olive oil and garlic for a quick marinara. Use this sauce on whole grain pasta as a base for soups, or in a shakshuka breakfast with eggs. You can also roast cherry tomatoes with olive oil until they blister, then toss them into a salad or grain bowl. If you enjoy curries, adding tomatoes enhances flavor and their spices and oil help unlock lycopene. Tomato juice works too. Many brands cook their tomatoes first so the lycopene is already available, but check labels for added salt or sugar. Better yet, make your own juice. Blend ripe tomatoes with a splash of olive oil and a squeeze of lemon. Leave the pulp in for extra fiber or strain it if you prefer a smoother texture. Tomatoes also deliver vitamin C, potassium, and hydration. They're a simple, delicious way to support your body's natural defenses. Our third and final tea is likely on your grocery list already, turmeric. Turmeric actually comes from Southeast Asia. It is a tiny little root, kind of a nub, kind of cigar shape, but tiny is smaller and it's got a little skin on it and you peel off the skin or if you break it in half you'll see that it's bright orange on the inside now this is a, an edible root that can be used for cooking and stewing uh, you often see this in southeast asian cuisine uh, you can also find it in indian cuisine as well and turmeric's actually been used for traditional healing ayurvedic healing traditional uh, medicines for thousands of years i like to think about it as a uh, colorful spice that you can actually use uh, for cooking as well. Turmeric, the golden spice you might recognize from curries or golden milk, gets its vibrant color from curcumin, a powerful plant compound. According to Dr. Lee and other researchers, curcumin has both cancer preventive and anti-angiogenic effects. Studies suggest it can help prevent colon polyps, slow the growth of colon and prostate cancer cells, and reduce the number of blood vessels feeding a tumor. On a cellular level, curcumin encourages unhealthy endothelial cells to self-destruct, lowers the production of growth signals like VEGF, blocks inflammation-related enzymes, boosts natural inhibitors that keep tissue breakdown in check, 
disrupts the formation of new blood vessel structures, and makes it harder for cells to move around. And in fact, it can actually help to slow down the burning down of your telomeres. These are actually the kind of like the fuses at the end of your DNA uh, that burn down as we age. It slows that whole process down. So that's turmeric. Here's the tricky part. Curcumin from turmeric doesn't naturally absorb well into the bloodstream. In his January 2025 newsletter, Dr. Lee shares a smart fix. Combine turmeric with black pepper. Black pepper contains piperine, which can boost curcumin absorption by up to 2,000%. Since curcumin is also fat-soluble, pairing it with healthy fats like olive oil or coconut oil helps your body take in even more. That's why so many recipes, curries, stir-fries, golden milk naturally mix turmeric with pepper and oil. Dr. Lee suggests easy ways to do the same at home. Sprinkle turmeric and black pepper over scrambled eggs, stir them into tea, or add them to your next stir-fry for both flavor and a bigger health payoff. Where can we find it? Remember, these foods don't replace medical treatment. They complement a healthy lifestyle that includes a balanced diet, regular exercise, good sleep, and stress management. Dr. Lee often talks about the body's defense systems, immunity, angiogenesis, regeneration, microbiome, and DNA protection, and how foods can influence each one. Walnuts, turmeric, and tomatoes are just three pieces of that bigger puzzle. I'd love to know, do you already eat these foods? Have you tried any of Dr. Lee's recipes? Tell us in the comments. If this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up, share it with someone you care about, and subscribe for more evidence-based nutrition videos. Remember, your kitchen is your pharmacy, and every meal is a chance to nourish yourself. Thanks for watching, and stay curious and healthy.